Morning. I'm at a place called Zosen, not far off Berlin. And uh, I'm going to explore some bunkers called My Bike 1 and 2 and the Zeppelin Bunker. All to do with the Supreme High Command of the um, German Army in the Second World War. Now I can't, uh, I can't sort of get in there as such as do some urbex and it's all completely sealed off. So I'll boot myself on a tour. So what I'll do is I'll have a look at what I can see. And um, I will probably do a voiceover on this one because there's a few people on this tour and uh, I think they're virtually all German. I'm lucky, I've managed to get myself a uh, uh, download uh, an audio guide which was free and um, so hopefully I can have a look round and then uh, I'll film it and point out what you're looking at as well as what I'm looking at. Okay so come along and have a look at uh, what's at uh, my back one two uh, bunkers and uh, the Zeppelin bunker as well. Before we look at what's left of this complex, let me give you some military history and background of Wunsdorf Zosen from World War I and World War II. In 1910, a proving ground and a garrison of the Imperial German Army was established at Wunstad, section of Wunsdorf community, still surviving to this present day. In World War I, it was the site of several prisoner of war camps, including the Crescent Camp for Muslims, who had fought for the Allied powers. This is where the first wooden mosque in Germany was erected. The camp ran from 1915 until 1917 and was used as a show camp for propaganda purposes, as well as an attempt to encourage the prisoners to change sides and fight for the central powers. Moving on to World War II and the Third Reich era. My back one and two were a series of above ground and underground bunkers. This was to house the high command of the army in my back one and the supreme command of the armed forces in my back two during the second world war. My back one and two were instrumental locations for which the central planning for field operations of the Weimar took place. And they provided a key connection between Berlin's military and civilian leadership to the front lines of battle. The complex was named after the Maybach car engine, which is a German luxury car brand that exists today as part of Mercedes-Benz. The engines were also used in a variety of vehicles for the German military in World War II. The Zeppelin bunker was erected by the German Postal Service on the orders of the High Command of the Armed Forces near the end of the 1930s. The codename for this bunker was Amt 500 or Postal Office 500. A south tunnel connected the Zeppelin bunker with Maybach 1 and 2 to the southwest. It was here that Barbarossa was planned and the complex was the heart of the German military planning up to the 20th of July 1945 when Soviet tanks arrived en route for Berlin. As our guide leads us through the entrance to this complex, we are greeted with the Maybach 1 hoses or as it was known back then as Station 2. We can have a look at some of these houses at my back one and also inside the Zeppelin bunker and I can give you some idea of what these houses would have been used for and who was stationed here. This is where the German weather service and the general of the air force with his staff were situated. Normally the air force, which doesn't belong to the army, would have been based elsewhere. But due to the blitzkrieg tactics, it was necessary to be close communication with each other. Based here was the staff of the Army Command West. Below this building was further basement buildings, which connected all of the above 12 buildings to each other and to the Zeppelin bunker, so that they could move safely between each other in times of danger. The air pressure below ground was much higher than the above buildings. This was in case of possible gas attacks, which would have kept the air clean below the ground. This is where the plan to invade the Soviet Union was drawn up here, under the direction of Friedrich Paulus, who eventually became Field Marshal during the Battle of Stalingrad. The codename of the attack on Russia was called Barbarossa. From May 1942, Reinhard Gehlen 
who was in charge of the Weimar Foreign Army's East Military Services, was also based here. After the war, he was employed by the Americans to set up Organisation Geelin during the Cold War. This was eventually called the Federal Intelligence Service of West Germany. Geelin ran this until 1968. The destruction, what the Germans caused after the war, was, is incredible. But then again, it was under a Potsdam Agreement. If you come across something that term, you think that term obviously needed to be destroyed because it was a, it's a ex Nazi, then it had to be destroyed. Russians didn't destroy everything here. They destroyed the surface, but underneath, they kept it for their own high command after the war. This is where the Army Quartermaster was located. Their job was to supply the army with rations and provisions. Edward Wagner was quartermaster here. The commander in chief of the high command of the army, Walter von Brusich, was stationed in this house. After his dismissal on the 19th December 1941 Russian campaign and the failure to capture Moscow, Adolf Hitler took over the role, even though Hitler never visited this complex. The general staff of the army was stationed here. Franz Heidler, who implemented Operation Barbarossa, the attack on Russia. Heidler was replaced by Kurt Zietzer, who was also based here and was a key figure of Operation Citadel, or as we know it, the Battle of Kursk. Heinz Guderian, who was an early pioneer of the Blitzkrieg after writing his book, Atung Panzer, which laid out the combined cooperation of the Air Force, tanks and mechanised infantry. This is part of the Russian setup. It's a protective structure made up of steel tubes, and I would assume that this would have been used in case of nuclear attack. You can see why they have um, the Germans have a lot of their installations inside forests. It's brilliant for covering up her. Uh, uh, for camouflage and um, the only problem they have is is trying to cover the uh, pathways in and the roads because if the Allies spotted that there was a road that led to nowhere in a the forest they would no doubt bomb it just in case. This building which we are entering the Zeppelin bunker was not the main German entrance. This tour is used in the original entrance as the exit. The roadway here was in the 1940s, with the main entrance set slightly back from this entrance. The Russians built the entrance exit with a solid steel airtight door. In case of nuclear attack, the Zeppelin bunker's name was changed to Ranit by the Russians. As we descend into the Zeppelin bunker, we're over 40 metres below ground level. This bunker is shaped like a letter L. The longest stretch is 117 by 22 metres, which consists of two floors with a shorter 57 by 40 metres, three-storey annex. Tell where it's nice and cool in here. Wow, was it? It's lovely. The Zeppelin communications bunker is connected by over 600 metres of tunnels to both the Maybach 1 and Maybach 2 buildings. However, the Maybach 2 system was completely blown up by the Soviets as part of the Four Powers Agreement at the end of World War II. So let's venture on through this bunker to see what's left of it. You can see the rebar there, which is blown off and it's rusted, obviously, probably condensation down here. I'm not sure what that is. It could be a toilet area. There's nothing up there, there's a hook. Difficult to see what that is. If you know where it is, let us know. And further down we go in the depths of this system.
These series of pipes are for sending secure messages with capsules of via air pressure between the Zeppelin bunker and Maybach 1 and 2. In total, there were 22 kilometres or over 13 miles of pipeline making up this system. As you can see the size of the hole in this roof. It's made up of 3 metres of reinforced concrete, then 2 metres of gravel, another 80 centimetres of concrete, another 2 metres of gravel, topped with up to 8 to 10 metres of soil. Vampires. <laughs> Let's have a look. Oh God, that's heavy. Good morning. Oh my. That's um, mm, interesting. <laughs> yeah, wow. Warum ist das hier? <laughs> I've just been told this is an emergency room in case you can't get anywhere upstairs and it's blocked off. Uh, the only way out really is going down and no doubt out a, diff a different way. And that's the hatch we saw before. <laughs> In World War II, this was a telex mediation room. From 1943 onwards, women worked here. Probably much more to this um, complex than the guards shown us, um, but at least you'll know a little bit about uh, what went on here, in the uh, Second World War. Uh, hopefully, there's enough information on what I've done, so at least you uh, know what you're looking at. Right, thanks for watching. I'll see you again.